What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back with another review. This is my review for Young, Famous, and African, the new Netflix show. Anybody who knows um, a Bling Pyre, Bling Empire, this is just like that, but the African version. Baby, something that we needed, okay? Because a lot of people seem to think, <clears throat> Marceau, you seem to think that phones don't work in Africa, and Africa is one way. No, okay? This is going to give a lot of people more insight on the beauty of the continent itself, even though it is based in South Africa. A lot of people think of Africa in general, and then they go back to them infomercials that they used to play late at night with the kids starving, um, asking for food. And it's not that. There's so much more to Africa than what people over here try to teach us. So, not saying that, you know, there aren't countries that need more resources and things of that sort. We all know that. However, there is an upside to everything and a different side of Africa that we need to see so people can know that, baby, it's black people living it up, getting the coin in Africa and doing their damn thing. And this is exactly what this show shows. So as y'all can see, I did decide to pay a little homage to the motherland today, okay? <laughs> and oh yeah, look at my nails, y'all. <laughs> All my nails fell off with the exception of these two. I can pop these off, but I don't want to hurt my nails. So whatever. Um anyway, yes, I wanted to give my thoughts on these show on this show. Y'all know when I do streaming show reviews, I'm really not into watching a few reviews. I mean, watching a few episodes and then doing a review on them. I'm not disciplined enough for that because streaming services, they typically give it to us all, especially Netflix. You know, they give us the whole season. And I binge watch it and then I just give my overall thoughts instead of going into detail. I just rather give my thoughts on important parts throughout the season. So, yes, I absolutely love the show. I'm very opinionated, as y'all know. And it's like sometimes I be forgetting that I got a, a, a platform. It's not like I forget, but it's like, girl, okay, you want to talk to your friends about it? Talk to your subscribers about it because they watching too, okay? This is spam. Go ahead. You got a platform. And the people want to know how you feel about these shows, Sakina, so go ahead and get into it. And that's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to get into it and we're going to talk about Young Famous and African. All right. So I do want to tell y'all, this is freestyle off the dome. I don't have any notes, anything like that. Um, I can do first impressions. Now, first impressions overall, we're going to discuss the elephant in the room, the skin bleaching. Mm -mm. there's only one dark-skinned female out of the group of women on the show. We have a white lady present, and then the remaining three women are of a lighter skin tone. Um, two of the women that I'm speaking of out of the three are obviously bleaching their skin. And let me tell you something, baby. That is not the shade of skin that you were meant to have, and I'm going to need people to understand that and just embrace your natural beauty because it doesn't look right. It doesn't. Um, Zari looks like she was already light-skinned, but maybe she just added some some bleach <laughs> to brighten it up a little bit more. Um, but you can still tell that that's not her natural skin tone. We all see it, and uh, I think her name is Connie. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct. The one who looks like Carly Red, my best friend said she looked like Carly Red. I was like, yes, I can say that she looked like somebody, and that's exactly who she looks like. Um, so Connie... We can obviously tell that's not her natural skin tone. You can see it in her face sometimes, depending on how her makeup is applied. So, baby, I'm going to need y'all to get it together. Nadia, I feel like that's her natural skin tone. Uh, she could be using some type of supp supplement, but I'm not too sure. But uh, the two obvious ones are definitely Connie and Zari. Um, I just hope that they're not passing their insecurities down to their daughters because all of them have darker skin children. So please just just allow your kids to embrace who they are. I know it's in the African culture. In certain African cultures, that's like a popular thing there. But I would never accept skin bleaching because I just feel like you need to embrace the skin that you're in. So please protect your children and let them know that their skin tone still makes them just as worthy as anybody else. So um, that and then the hair. Baby, let me tell y'all, I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't understand. Now, y'all are people of a certain tax bracket, right? Why y'all here in LA? There's nobody in South Africa that knows how to apply a wig, a frontal, getting it together. Because why do I see so many terrible frontals? Uh, Connie's wig was slipping back, Karen style from Potomac. 
<laughs> on one of them scenes, baby. You can see her her braids. I said, sis, how you gonna try to read somebody and get somebody together? But your wig slipping. No, ma'am. See, the thing is, uh, y'all, see, little old me who ain't got nearly as much coin as they do, my wig look better than theirs. I mean, you could look, if you look up close, you can see the lace, you know, I'll give you, I'll give y'all a little, look, look at it. Y'all could, y'all could see what lace, that lace. However, back here, it don't look that bad. And you know what? I got my scarf on because like I said, laying wigs is not my thing. And sometimes I do come on here and I get caught slipping because that curly wig, I have not mastered sis yet. And it's like, that's why I keep putting hats and stuff on. It's just like, ugh. and I'm too lazy to do my real hair at this point. I got to get a trim and it's like my hair is not laying right. So until I get a trim, I ain't going to be right. But I got a hair consultation on Monday. So we working towards some things to get sis back right. Anyway, and y'all in Africa, baby, not list braids. Y'all already know if you don't know how to lay a wig down, then you need to get some braids. Y'all are in Africa. In Africa, knotless braids, booty length is every bit of $20. And I don't understand that, honey, because it's like, <laughs> what are we doing wrong here in America? Why? Because it's not like Konekalon hair costs a lot of money. I don't know, like, if it's the supplies. I don't know what it is. Because I was like, maybe it's the material, but no. Because even Konekalon hair here is no more than $4. I think my dog farted. Roscoe, get out. Oh my gosh, it stinks. <sighs> um, anyway, yes, I just don't understand why the hair is not together, y'all. It just bothers me. Um, at one point, Nadia had these big, like, faux lock things in her hair. Like, they look like faux locks, but again, they like, didn't. It, it was kind of weird. I said, girl, how do you sleep at night with all that damn hair? It just didn't make sense to me. So, yeah, I just need the girls to get their hair together because there's no way that those lace front wigs look that way. Like, no, that's unacceptable. Y'all need to y'all need to get it together. Y'all need to get some braids. At one point, Zari was wearing her real hair. I said, thank you. See, you look way better. You look way better with your natural hair compared to them wigs that y'all be tossing on y'all heads because that's exactly what y'all do. Y'all just toss them on. Anyway, I had to get that off my chest because I just feel like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That y'all know I'm an aesthetics girl, okay? And once I see something off, it bothers me the entire time. And it even Annie's fade sometimes that like uh spray, like the little gray spray, her and the other guy, I can't remember his name. I think it's like uh a delay. I think that's how you pronounce his name. They both have like that gray spray paint in their hair, and that was bothering me. Like, I don't y'all just don't look right. It don't look good. Like, either get your real hair dyed, but that spray paint. It, it didn't look good. So, um, anyway, I just had to get that off my chest. Um, first impressions, people-wise, the cast-wise, okay. So, basically, like, the nucleus of the group is uh, Connie, right? And she is the bling queen. And I'm just kind of like, you have this title, but then it's kind of like, yeah, your event. It was not giving bling queen. We get a little background history on her. She used to uh, be married to an old man. He was a scammer. She said she didn't care how much money he made or how he got his money. It is what it is. But now she's with a younger guy. She's 35. Allegedly. She's 35. She's dealing with somebody that's 28. Allegedly. Because you can't tell him he my age. I'm 29. That man look every bit of 48, not 28. But... I just feel like some people lying about their age on this show and we just gonna toss that out there because it's just not something ain't giving what y'all said that it's supposed to gave. But okay. So she on to younger things, honey. And she like where she at with this man. Okay, so she's the nucleus of the group. And my first impression of her, I was like, oh, I don't like her. Mm -mm, I'm not feeling sis. No, ma'am. Because the energy that she was giving off was just too much for me and then when she got to know a little bit more of annie's business she then said that it was ammunition and i said oh so you wanted them okay yeah that's basically how everybody got together um the first episode we seen they all were getting together for an event that she was having um we also got uh introduced to um Nadia, who is a South African rapper. I did hear a bit of a bar, you know, when they were showing her video. I said, okay, you're giving a little something. Come to find out she's dating Vic Mensa, a Chicago native here 
in America. I was very surprised to hear that. Um, I didn't know that he um, actually has family or his roots are from Ghana. So I guess they bonded over that. They're dating long distance. Obviously, she's in Africa. He's in the U.S. So obviously, um, it's kind of new. They still, you know, trying to figure things out, but they're definitely together. She was sharing that with Connie. And Connie, I was confused by her trying to get Nadia onto Diamond. Fast forward to Diamond. First impression, them puff balls gotta go, baby. Because I was like, what's going on here? Huh? Uh, Diamond is a rapper. Diamond Platinums, I think that's his stage name. Um, he got coin. He is from, um... Tanzania I believe and uh he's coming down to you you know be a part of the celebration that Connie is throwing and all of that um I said baby you a hot mess baby didn't even know how many kids he got he said he got four kids for sure he might have five six and I said okay immediate red flag because you just slang and peeing any and everywhere what do we expect he's a rapper he's a successful rapper at that so honey yeah he got kids everywhere and he not too sure how many he got exactly so when Connie goes and picks him up from his PJ she's telling him oh I got somebody that I want you to meet Nadia now he's saying that he don't follow her on social media but he knows her he stalked her page a few times and Nadia was a little taken aback when Connie was telling her about Diamond because it's like girl I, I got a man so what you doing but she put this bug in both of their ears so then they meet up at Connie's party they get introduced to each other they're all sitting at this round table and now all of a sudden these two people have some type of something for each other so their whole relationship is just totally weird to me I would not want to get involved with anybody who don't even know how many kids he got. No, thank you. No. And you be roaming the streets. I think not, baby. Well, she's in the industry as well. So it could work out more compared to like a regular person who don't live that lifestyle. But still, it's a no for me. Um, So then we get introduced to Annie and Swanky. Now, Annie is an actress, but that gets overshadowed by the success of her husband. Her husband is a successful artist as well. I think he's a singer. I don't think he's a rapper, but he's a musician nonetheless. And he's a big deal. Like, I, who said that? I think my friend told me that he's like the first person in Africa to have a Lamborghini. No, my best friend, my best friend told me that because her husband is uh, from Cameroon. So he's African and uh, he is familiar with some of these people on the show. But um, yeah, so two, two, Two Baba, I think that's his name, or Innocence. They kept calling him two different names, Innocence. Um, he's a successful artist, and she kind of gets overshadowed. Her success gets overshadowed by his and who she's attached to. Um, I like Annie, first impression. I was like, I definitely like her, especially when um, Connie was giving her speech, and she was giving out all these bank accounts and amounts and all of that. I was with her. I cannot stand flashy people who boast and brag about how much money they got. Baby, I didn't ask you that. I didn't. If we're having a conversation and you telling me how much your bag costs, or you talking about, mm, I'm trying to figure out if I should spend this this uh, 50K. Like, you know, little shit like that. It's just like, mm, baby, you're getting lame. I don't like I don't like when men do that. I don't like when women do that because I didn't ask for that. It's giving very, very braggy. So when she clocked Connie for doing that, I was like, we see each other. I feel you. So um, first impression, I definitely liked Annie. And then we got introduced to, um, oh yeah, I'm forgetting um, Naked, the DJ, DJ Naked. Baby, he definitely did not give DJ tees. Um, yeah. I could definitely get the doctor vibe from him or, you know, something along those lines. But the nightlife, club promoter, DJ, the type of vibe, I was not getting that from him. Um, initially, I was definitely weirded out by him. Like, sir, what's going on? We, we you know, he had a white girlfriend or he has a white girlfriend, Kaylee. Very shocking to me because y'all know usually I'm like, mm, a token white girl. Mm, we don't need it. But, baby, I like Kaylee, okay? She is one of my favorites. I think she is drop dead gorgeous and I just really vibe with her personality like that that's my girl she's one of my favorites out of the entire cast so shout out to Kaylee hey girl um him trying to be romantic with her I was like absolutely not this awkward ass cuddle and she was like he's not really romantic and I'm thinking okay so how did y'all get together if he don't know how to cuddle he don't know how to romance you like what's going on but she said that he was like that initially and then things just went south between the romance 
I don't, I don't, with the romance between the two of them, I just don't understand how that happened, but girl, okay. So yeah, we got introduced to him, and then we got introduced to, um, I think his name is Adile. I liked him initially. I liked the conversation that him and Annie had um, when they pulled each other to the side. Um, they just seemed like two logical people for me. And I just liked his interaction when he was with the men and all of this. And then shit just kind of went left out of nowhere towards the end of the season. And I was confused because I'm like, sir, I like you. But now all of a sudden, I want to fight you. But we're going to get into that in a minute. I just want to give y'all my first impressions on, on the people. Um... Just making all kind of noise. He just be farting. He's scratching loud. He's just doing too much. So anyway, um, then we get introduced to Zaria, uh, Zaria, uh, Zari. This is I think this is the last castmate that we had got introduced to. I don't want to miss anybody, but oh, Miss Ma'am is Diamond's baby mama, and she kind of gets tossed into the mix. Um, we weren't, I wasn't expecting her, but yeah, she got tossed into the mix. So we'll talk about her in a minute. But first impressions, I was definitely feeling her. Okay. So anyway, we can go ahead and dive into it. Cause I think I talked about everybody pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I talked about everybody. Okay. So, um, they all get introduced and acclimated with each other down at Connie's party. And oh yeah, it's Swanky too. Swanky, uh, I definitely like the, the fashions honey the fashions are there you are definitely that guy okay however it's very hard for me to connect with somebody when all i can see is shades you're hiding behind shades i can't even see your face and it really made me it made it hard for me to connect with the entire cast that way because majority of the scenes early on in the season they were wearing shades the whole time and i'm like can y'all take them off y'all are inside y'all are having these full-blown conversations with shades on and it's difficult for me roscoe come come um yeah it was just very hard for me to connect with them so um anyway we get down to this party and nadia bringing up her not nadia connie bringing up her her children and how her kid not her children she just has one kid um how her daughter lives next door to her she pretty much lets her daughter have free will to do whatever she wants to do and it's kind of alarming her daughter is 15 she said her daughter has a separate apartment away from her and connie uh not connie stop getting the names wrong andy doesn't like this she's like baby never would i allow my daughters to just be like that because annie has children uh one of her daughters um for the first time was able to stand up on both of her legs for her birthday she's very close to her daughters um so she was just like no i would not allow that out of any of my children and she was basically saying that connie is a bad mama now this is a first impression so it is kind of like speak how you feel on something but tread light because you know how people do not play about their kids so it's just like Okay, you know, you can have your opinion, but like I said, just tread lightly because she could definitely get ugly. Um, I was worried when Connie was like, basically, her daughter can lose her virginity whenever. No, sis, I'm worried. Oh, no, uh-uh, no, no. So, yeah, they go off, um, and, and delay and Annie, they go and have their conversation to kind of, you know, get an idea because um, Adila, he wasn't okay with that idea either. He has daughters as well. So they go off and they have their conversation. And I actually like the energy between the two of them. I like the conversation that they were having. Annie decided to open up at this point. This is when Connie had joined the conversation. But she opened up about her relationship with uh, Innocent. And baby, he is far from that. Come to find out this nigga is a whole dog. He done had five children on her, y'all. Five children. And his fifth child was there first. So that means after y'all started Charles family, he was continuing to plant seeds elsewhere and had his fifth child outside of you after y'all already started Charles family. And you accepted that. I couldn't get down with that at all. Like I, I just could not, y'all, the frustration that I felt from then on with Annie and her relationship it, the whole thing just blew the hell out of me. And that's when Connie was like, oh, she done laid all of this out, all her insecurities out and told me about her marriage. Like, 
wrong move, boo, because now I got you in my pocket. And I didn't like that because it's like, girl, for what? Because she was just asking. I mean, she gave her opinion about your daughter not needing her own apartment. Now, later on in the uh, episode, or like the next episode, they did meet up and they had a conversation about it. Baby, when I tell y'all I was cracking up <laughs> about them going back and forth, calling each other bad moms, you a bad mom. No, you a bad mom. Okay, but I'm a bad mom. My, my daughter right there next door, but what about you? Baby, your kids is in Nigeria with your mama. Your kids can't come and, uh, you can't go and comfort your kid or be to your kids, A, because you in a whole nother country, boo. And that shit was so funny to me, like, mm. And she got a point, bitch. Her daughter is next door, and yours is, is countries away. So, I mean, she, she, she got that ass. Like, that shit was funny as hell to me. But then when we see that Connie's daughter is, like, literally the room, the next room over, it wasn't to the point of, she in a whole different building. She's literally, as soon as Connie opens the door, her daughter's apartment is right there. So I didn't necessarily see that as an issue. Once I seen how close they were, it was just like, oh, okay. I mean, Connie was asking her daughter, did she think she a bad mom and all of that? So obviously something Anna said definitely did have her feeling some type of way because she felt like she needed to be reassured by her daughter. But uh, her daughter was like, you know, it isn't typical, but you know, you're the parent, so you're allowed to raise me the way that you want to raise me. I Like I said, I didn't see a problem with it. I just felt like you acting like her virginity is just so easily and okay to lose at her age. That was definitely something that worried me of it. But you know, just protect your daughter. It is what it is. Um, who else did I want to talk about? Okay, let's talk about this Arabian Nights situation, all right? It's Diamond's birthday. Oh, no. Oh, no. Before we talk about that, let's go ahead and get into Diamond and Nadia's budding relationship. Out of nowhere, they meet at Connie's party. They get introduced. And like I said, all of a sudden, y'all are just into each other like that. Y'all even have enough time to have a conversation at the event. And then he invites her to go car shopping while he's going to be spending his time in South Africa. And it just confused me. Okay, now you want to take her to help you pick out a car? He was really annoyed with her when he was uh, car shopping. Like, they just didn't have the same taste. And okay, whatever. So then he goes and tells her that he's, like, actively trying to pursue her. And it's just like, why? It seemed like they were too invested into each other too soon y'all really didn't have much of anything to stand on outside of connie saying that she wanted to hook y'all up and then it kind of seemed like y'all was all in from there on and it, it just confused me y'all know how i feel about people moving fast it just does not seem genuine to me and that's what it was giving me watching this show i could not fully invest into the relationships that were forming because it's like they kind of happen out of thin air like what they it's like you look down and you look up and it's like what's going on not your not to have any strong feelings for each other. What happened since I looked down? Like, do I need to rewind something? Because I feel like I missed something. That's how I felt the entire time with these love circles, triangles, squares, and just all of that BS that came within this group and their relationships. Okay. So, um, that confused me. Then we get to Diamond's party and it's Arabian Nights. Everybody comes in and he introduces Connie. I mean, he introduces Zari, um, Zari, the boss lady. And Nadia's feeling some type of way. Sis, why are you feeling some type of way? You got a man. You and this man ain't even did nothing. So now all of a sudden you feel like you are catching feelings because he expressed interest. That's what it, that's what it gave. And I was so confused by that. Like, why are you pressed that he brought his baby mama there? I don't care if he's in interested in you. You got a man. And I know he big probably in the U.S. doing some shit too. But still, it's just like you're that invested in him this early on to where you're feeling some type of way that his baby mama is in the room. And then Andy gets on the phone with Innocent. And she acting like a damn groupie. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My husband's on the phone. Oh my gosh. Y'all look. Look, everybody, look. What kind of shit is that? I said, okay, this is a problem this shit right here is an absolute turnoff i hated how she was acting i the fact that she even googled her husband it made sense after she said that you know he's a cheater i'm like sis what the hell okay the husband and zari know each other and he wants to know how zari knows her husband 
Zari didn't give an answer. Zari didn't give an answer. Okay, why not? Now, at first, she, she asked multiple times, and I was kind of like, Annie, girl, okay. All right, because then we get down to the high tea, and Annie and Nadia are both feeling some type of way about Zari being at the high tea. Now, Zari being thrown into the mix was a little bit confusing to me anyway because I felt like, Connie, what are you doing? You go and have a conversation with Diamond's baby mom, but yet you're trying to put Nadia and Diamond together. Like, you're too invested in people's relationships, and it's weird to me. That's another reason why I did not like her initially because, girl, you're doing too damn much. So, y'all get to this high tea. Kennel. Go get in the cage. You're doing too damn much. You just went outside. Anyway, um, they get to the high tea, and Nadia and Annie are annoyed by Zari's presence. And that's why I was like, oh, you bitches is mad, and it's irritating me because I don't understand why y'all got so much heat for this lady when she don't know neither one of y'all. She wasn't giving y'all no bad energy. She wasn't being stank to y'all, but y'all being stank to her. And it was not sitting well with me. So, um, it was just confusing. Look, I'm going over my tweets. Because I know I had something to say about that. Um, yeah, it was just like, Annie, you're insecure because you know she knows your husband. And then, Nadia, you feeling some type of way just off the strength of her being Diamond's baby mama. Like I said, sis, you have a whole man. Um, it was just too much. So, um, then we talk about, hold on, look, I'm trying to go through my tweets. Yeah, I, I, I just couldn't get into Annie, right? Let's just go ahead and get into that because Annie was a big part of this, this whole season so far. Baby, um, every time she talked about innocent and talking about how much he was a good man, I wanted to bomb it. I wanted to bomb it every time because every time that man was brought up, he's just such a good person. He da 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 da. He does this. He does that. He also has five kids on you, and you stayed. And your reaction to him on that Facetime call showed me everything that I needed to know. You're with this man because of who he is, and I understand that you was with him before the fame. But just like you said, you woke up one day. And your man was a celebrity. He was a superstar. And that's the reason why you stayed after he had four kids on you. And then y'all started child's family. And then he had another kid on you after y'all started child's family. You've been his ride or die. Been with him since thick and thin. And like I, like a lot of us say, y'all do wear that shit as a badge of honor. I don't want to go through hell to be with you. For what? You don't appreciate me. You've already shown me how you felt about me by the amount of times that you didn't put your dick into somebody else and got her pregnant. And just put your dick into somebody else, period. And don't keep blaming it on the fact that he was young. Because that's not that's never going to be justifiable for me. Ever. You are definitely insecure because no woman in her right mind would stay with a nigga that didn't have five kids on her. You stayed because of who he is and and what that brought you. You like being attached to a famous man and you like the benefits, even though you're an actress and you're, you're established on your own, but you also are tied to this man. And it was disgusting to me. So then even when he got there, you licking on his face and you doing all of this like, oh my gosh. And even when he renewed his vow, he wants to renew their vows. I couldn't be excited for her. I'm dead as like rolling my eyes every time she brings up that man's name. It's just like, ugh. And you just going up for him. You singing his praises. Meanwhile, he 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 don't give a shit about none of that because he keep cheating on your ass. And only Lord knows if he's still cheating on you. Cause if you can have five kids on me, if you if if you willing to stay with a man that have five kids on you, he's still cheating on you to this day. You can't convince me otherwise. So, um, yeah, they decided to renew their vows. Child, like I said, I couldn't even be happy. But one thing about it, when they decided to go and tell everybody and announce it, it was kind of weird because, Annie, you are new to the group, so it is kind of like, uh, okay, like, 
what are they supposed to do with this news? Okay. But whatever. They decided to give the news to the group. And Zari, you take it amongst yourself to pull Innocent to the side. Grab him by the hand. Pull him to the side to talk about what? What was your goal here? Because that was my whole thing. What 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 are you doing here? What's going on? Okay. Um, so you go and pull him to the side. You talk about how Annie is asking how they know each other. And it's like, okay, now it comes out that y'all knew each other through business. So why couldn't you just say that when Annie asked you at the time? And then you go and say, it's not like we fucked or anything. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm going to go and tell her that. Annie, come here. What is that? What are you doing? And then, yeah, you pull her into the conversation. And then you go and say in front of her husband that she's insecure. We all know that. But yeah, what was your aim here? Were you trying to cause chaos and confusion within their marriage? That was confusing to me. I didn't understand it. And that's where I started to have a switch for her. I couldn't see see it for her anymore because, I, bitch, I see you. You know that you are an attractive woman. And it's like, you're playing on that. You're playing on Annie's insecurity and you're toying with it. Instead of just giving her the answer right then and there at the Arabian night, you wait to, to drag her husband to the side to talk about nothing. That man didn't even know what the hell y'all was talking about. He was confused as hell. And so was I. Because what was the what was the reason? Okay? In my Cardi B voice. It did, did, did make sense. So yeah, bitch, I caught you. And that's when I stopped fucking with her. Because it's like, yeah, you use this boss, boss bitch persona to like play on women. And I didn't like that. So, um, yeah, that was too much for me. And then it's like Annie want to have a conversation with you about it. And you make it seem like it's a problem. No, she's calling you out because what you did was definitely some fucked up shit. So then you want to have a conversation with Connie. Now, I agree. I agree when they was having that um, back and forth. I agree with Zari. Like, I don't need a man to, I don't need to be connected to a man to feel important like yeah and that's exactly what it gives like i said annie is an actress she's successful in her own right but it is like you're clinging on to this man who obviously done dogged you out for years for 10 years or however long y'all y'all was together fuck the, all the time that y'all done been together what about because that's another thing that made me want to throw up when she was like yeah we've had some hard times but we had so many good times it's like you're trying to convince yourself that you know Y'all are meant to be together and all of this. Like, girl, what? I hear, I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. Save it. But I was here for Connie when Zari had a conversation with her when they went out to eat. Like, girl, she's a broken woman. We're broken women. This is. She's no different from the typical African woman. I, I like how she was being honest about the situation and you know the culture and how african women are supposed to treat their men and you know be stick beside him throughout the bullshit that he put her through blah 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 though they are not though they are not the women they may have been like that in the past they're not like that today she is still stuck in that mold so instead of judging her just try to be there in support of her and if you was gonna pull him to the side then you should have been like you know all the pain that you done put her through blah 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 and that's when shit started to turn for me that's when i really started to like um connie because i felt like girl speak on it yes ma'am if you was gonna pull him to the side you shouldn't pull him to the side anyway but if you was gonna do it then it should have been in defense of annie and all the shit that she didn't put up with bottom line she shouldn't have did it anyway and i don't i'm like sorry so anyway i didn't like when they tried to make amends with each other, Swanky tried to put them together because at this point, everybody in the group is starting to see Zarya for who she is. She messy. She bringing all kind of drama within the group and then nobody want to be around her. But Swanky is like, you know, I am cool with her. So I want to go ahead and put this um, meeting together between Annie and Zari. Okay, so when he put that together, Annie, baby, you can tell how Annie feel about the situation based on how she dressed. She came in with a damn jogger set on and it's like, girl... Okay, you keep cutting Zari off, and I understand she full of shit. We all know she full of shit because she stand on what she said to you when y'all had y'all one on one. But it's still like allow her to speak. You say it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's just like girl, okay, hear her out. Let her get her thought across, 
and then you go about your business. You don't got to fool with her after this. She was just doing too much for me. So they both knew that they wasn't going to be friends after that. But then Zari goes and has this train event that she wants to throw and have everybody kumbaya together. Okay. Oh, and by this time, this is the time where uh, a delay and um, Zari start flirting all of a sudden out of the blue just another random romance approaching he got a crush on her now that diamond and went back to tanzania and then went to the u.s now all of a sudden you eyeing <coughs> his girl or his baby mom and he didn't open up to you and told you how he feel about her and how he really don't deserve her but he still love her nonetheless <coughs> and you still and you out here trying to be with her Talking about, we just vibing. I just want to get her alone one-on-one -on -one so we can just continue to vibe. You know exactly what you're doing. Vibing my ass. You trying to fuck her. And, and and I don't even understand why she entertaining that. Girl, you went all the way to his house to give him an invitation. I know you ain't went to nobody else's house. Like, what the hell is going on? So everybody is noticing this weird-ass relationship and how y'all got hell to pay one dime and come home. So anyway, it was just weird as hell to me. Um that was strange they get on the on the train y'all was definitely wrong for the way that y'all was coming at zari i was actually on her side when she was saying thank y'all for coming out to you know my event because she did orchestrate it so it is essentially something that she put together connie i feel like you was definitely doing too much in that in that time it was just too much like uh-uh y'all was wrong um nadia i feel like you was following connie you just didn't like her because that's diamond's baby mama you ain't like how he was basically studying on you over arabian nights at that point it was giving me follower vibes at the end of the day i feel like i'm rambling but i ain't like that and y'all was in the wrong y'all was jumping on naked swanky was um yelling at the top of his lungs about how y'all need to get it together Child, how you think they gonna get it together when you when you bossing them more y'all need to get it together right now start talking baby who who gonna start talking no it was just a whole lot child listen at the end of the day they get down to this renew this vow renewal right everybody make peace at this point they get down to this vow renewal Annie, you look the mess. I'm sorry, Swanky, you dressed her and you need your ass whooped because every time any of them girls put on anything mesh, it looked a mess. Like, no, 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 no. I hate mesh because it don't match our skin tones. Nine times out of ten, it just don't look cute to me. But um, Annie looked a mess on her wedding day. She had that crown on her head. It was just a ghetto mess. Um, Yeah, Connie had pulled uh, Innocent to the side beforehand and I like how receptive he was and understood that she was just trying to look out for the best interest of Annie because it could have definitely went left. But I just feel like, fuck that vow renewal, baby. Uh, sign them papers. Anyway, that's her problem, not mine. Um, after they after they had a delay um, officiate the wedding, I was with Nikki. Y'all got the biggest hoe trying to make the damn uh, the renewal official. No, I think not. Anyway, this man goes to Zari's house. And then, before he arrives, Diamond pops up at Zari's house. And he's thinking that he there to surprise Diamond. No, nah, baby, he there to surprise your girl, your BM. And he was confused as hell. So, that's when they left it at a cliffhanger. But I'm just like, I need more. Okay? I had to wrap this up, y'all. I felt it's 38 minutes on. I, I, what the hell is going on? Adile, you definitely wrong. You a dog. I don't trust you. Diamond is a dog. I feel like he was definitely giving judgmental vibes with Nadia and Diamond. Well, you went and did the same thing, invited two of your baby mamas to an event, and you was trying to holler at Zari all under the same breath. Like, how dare you, hypocrite? And then, um, I just felt like it was a, a, the the triangles, the, the relationships that they were having in the group. Like, it's just messy. But at the same time, this show is everything that I needed to see. Baby, the places that they were going, I said, Delta.com, baby. Okay, I need to see what them flights to South Africa is giving, okay? The place looks so beautiful. Everywhere that they went, like, the country just looks so beautiful. It's only 1700 okay? If you're trying to fly in the month, in the year of uh, 2023, okay? If y'all got the coin, go ahead and book y'all a flight and get on down there to South Africa, okay? Because I said, listen, I, I need to see what's going on, okay? I need to go on and visit, visit my people and see and see. See what man I can swoop up down there. Look. <laughs> Give me a PJ, boo. Anyway, 
that was my thoughts on Young Famous and African. I definitely enjoyed the show. Um, y'all get down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about the show, the cast, all of that. We could definitely continue the conversation. I just wanted to give my thoughts on a lot of the BS that was going on. Uh, my favorites, I would tell y'all, I actually like Naked. Naked is one of my favorites out of all the guys. Um, like Kaylee, I, w I need them to get it together. Um, love Kanye at this point. Um, but sis was definitely tripping on the train. Um, Nadia, mm, I don't know, mixed feelings. Um, Diamond, as of right now, I'm team him because, mm, no, because I mean, he did his dirt with Zari too. So it's like, you a dog as well. Um, but I'm interested to see how this shit gonna play out. Um, I did like a delay, but then he was on some dog shit. I don't like that. Zari, no, it's a no for me now completely. Um, but I can't agree with some of the stuff that she says. Um, who else? Annie, mixed feelings. Cause girl, I like you. And then I see you with your husband and I don't like you no more. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. I pretty much spoke on the whole cast. Oh, I keep forgetting about Swanky. I feel like we need more from him. Shout out to him and his GQ cover. But I need more from him. And I need you to take your shades off more often. You are very handsome. But stop hiding behind the shades. I don't know if it's just like a statement piece because you a fashionista and all of that. But baby, we need more from him as well. Because I keep forgetting about him. And I am definitely intrigued. So let's get down in the comments. Like I said, let's continue the conversation down there. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about the show. I think it's amazing. The visuals, everything. I just need them to go ahead and get that head done and i would also like for them to show us more outside of south africa because the timeline is just not i'm not saying the timeline isn't clear but i'm just not understanding why annie is in south africa why swanky is in south africa it all started with them being in south africa because of connie's event but the event has come and gone so it's just like okay let's start filming y'all in nigeria let's start filming y'all in tanzania where y'all are actually from Maybe even follow uh, Diamond to the U.S. to see, you know, the his success. Things of that nature. Let's get more into Annie's acting career. All of that. So, I think I think I done got all I need to say out. Okay, this video long as hell. Let's get down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Why did I sing that? <laughs>